everyone who is participating on this session across the globe. Hi, I'm Neil. Uh, I head Pixels in APAC in Europe. Uh, today, uh, in next 10 minutes, I'm going to... So I'm, I'm in between the award ceremony and the last session, so apologies to keep you waited. I will ensure that your 10 minutes are invested well uh, while listening to me. So in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to uh, ensure that uh, I speak all about AI into marketing. I will cover about myths about AI. I'll try and cover what are the what are the benefits of AI and a lot of other stuff. So let me get started. I mean, let me get started with myths around AI adoption early uh, initially. Uh, so one of the biggest myths when I talk to marketers is that it's expensive. Uh, if you measure AI only with the additional cost to your marketing environment, you will definitely find it expensive. But if you measure AI with the return on investment which it is giving you, it will be far cheaper than any of the marketing investment which you've been doing. So yes, it's a myth. It's not expensive. It has the best ROI. Uh, I need a data scientist to operate if I'm doing an AI. Uh, I think that's another myth because there are in, in the market there are no code, low code kind of AI, just like how Pixis has in our label. Uh, these AI is basically made for marketers. They don't need engineers or data scientists in their team. And basis their objectives, these AIs help them to solve their objectives. So yeah, you don't need a data scientist to operate on AI. I also keep hearing that AI will replace humans. I mean, I think that's the biggest myth I've heard. Uh, across my life. Uh, AI and human uh, brain is the best combination ever to have with the strategy and thinking of the human and with the fabulous implementation of accuracy and result-oriented AI is a good combination you will have. So AI will never replace humans. It is only a great combination with humans. And lastly, I've also heard, you know, I don't need AI at all. Uh, in, in order to answer this, let me go for ahead and tell you, you are already using AI everywhere. So if you see uh, you're using AI in day-to-day -day activities, at, uh, while you're using maps or navigation, you're using AI. If you're wearing watches, uh, wearables are also AI. Shopping, media, or even healthcare, uh, doctors are using AI in order to diagnose, the, predict the disease early on and to ensure your right results of that as well. So you are already using AI in day-to-day -day activities. So yes, you need AI and you are using it already. How AI is growing and benefiting across uh, businesses is also important. Today, AI is helping marketers to grow their business, uh, to digital marketers to ensure they have better optimization, uh, to process-oriented organization, to have processes in automation through AI. And at the end, AI also gives insights, which is really important and cognitive for, uh, for marketers to ensure to use them in their way-to-way -way business growth. Uh, so that's that's AI in day-to-day -day activity and even in business. Uh, let me let me go into let me change gears and go into more larger discussion of where the digital landscape is growing today. I mean, if you see currently, the digital landscape is changing significantly. Uh, there is almost four fifty-five billion dollar uh, ad ad industry across the globe, which is currently giving a six trillion kind of a revenue to marketers. But there are revenue disruptions in the market, which most of us are aware now, which is like a cookie-less web, iOS updates, or platform privacies. And because of all of these things, the marketers who are uh, investing $455 billion will observe a loss in the return. Uh, and how are they going to observe? I think we are observing a drop in ROS across categories. Uh, hello. Um, uh, I hope everyone is able to hear me. Okay, so let me go back to this thing. So there, there are marketers who are uh, observing AI drop, ROI drop across categories like fashion, beverages, automobile, and there is a drop in ROAS. And because of all of this thing, there is a partially $2.1 trillion industry worth of sales is going to be lost. In order to ensure that this entire ecosystem is not lost, it's there's a need of deploying self-evolving neural network which are the only way to stay ahead of the bigger issues that are going to come. And how, how is Pixis doing all of this thing is what I'm going to walk you through in the next two to three minutes. Uh, at Pixis, uh, we have created a complete AI infrastructure for demand generation. So we have multiple models in place which are integrated across 100 plus platforms with almost 1 billion plus data points. How are we doing this? We have governance AI currently. So if you are a digital marketer spending on Google, Facebook, Instagram, any of the digital platform today, you are currently manually implementing all of your bid and budget. With our governance, AI will bring in automation, which will result in faster, better, effective efficiency for your output. We also help 
to target shoppers. And today, if you are doing any of your marketing activity, you're generating CRM to either Facebook output or any other output. You're not looking at a CRM, which is your current CRM through HubSpot, Apps Flyer, or multiple other resources. So through our targeting engine, we ensure you target better and you get a better ROI and you're not wasting a duplication in terms of media wastage. So if uh, while how we do all of this thing is pretty simple, we input the CRM data, we input the web analytics, social media data into our three targeting ad engine. And the output is pretty simple. Uh, our commitment to market is, is all about our pitch. Uh, I mean, we beat any of the marketing objectives you have. So if you have a digital KPI of uh, uh, getting uh, X lead at Y dollar, we will improve that by 10 to 15% only in three weeks. We are an organization who do not require pixel implementation. So our AI integration is just a Chrome plugin. And in eight seconds, less than eight seconds, you can get started with us. And we are more than happy to provide uh, free FOCs uh, for POCs for all our listeners who are listening to us today. Let me walk you through with one of the case studies, which will help you understand how, how AI is important in entire digital marketing world. So this is one of our example of an AI on one of a US brand who has an object, it's an insurance or a BFSI kind of a target. It, it objective was pretty simple to improve the lead funnel while refining the lead qualities or lower the CAC. With the Pixis implementation of solution, we, we went ahead and created hyper-personalization of creative, of their master creative, and ensured that a particular person to whom we are targeting has, watches a creative which is relative to them, which he can relate to that. And result of that was pretty much possible through the implementation, which you can see on the screen as well. Uh, let me now walk you through with one of the AI, one of the videos, which will help you understand AI far better. So this is one of our global brands, Albert, and the video will talk a lot about that. Yes, so uh, that that was a little bit of a small video about one of our clients globally who have used our engine and largely talking about how AI has helped them to in order to achieve their business objective. So more than happy, uh, Bharti, if I can take any any discussions or any questions if they are there. You guys can also reach me out on this collaterals in case you want to, uh, you have any questions or any other things to be getting used to this. Hello, Mr. Pandya. I hope I'm audible. Yes, uh, we are just getting the questions uh, from the back end. Uh, and please bear with me for some time. Sure. Uh, yes, we do have a question, Mr. Suman uh, and Joy, who was also one of our panelists uh, today. Uh, he says, hi, Neil. Is AI-led sales development 
uh, need large data or it's like good for small data as well? Uh, I would say firstly, brilliant question. That was another myth which I could have included in my session as well. Uh, you really don't need uh, large data points in order to ensure AI uh, gives you right output for the business growth. It's definitely yes, if you have more data points, you will have more accurate results and more output growth. But the engine which today AI is working with multiple organizations like myself as well, uh, with it's, it's self-learning engines. If in case you do not have major data points or the back end history or you're launching a new product which has nothing in the past it it will help you to learn on its own within six to eight days it will learn unlearn and it will have a lot of learnings with data points we have so in a very simple answer no you don't need large data uh, with small limited or no data as well you can get uh, use ai in terms of growth uh Mr. Uh, Mr. Enjoy, I hope uh, you got your answer. Uh, so uh, he is saying that so it's good for startups too. Uh, does the cost like is the cost like you know justified for these startups? Uh, sorry, I mean, Bharti, you were breaking. I couldn't hear you. Is the question that is the cost expensive or how it is? Uh, so it's good for startups too. Uh, does like the cost justify uh, when it comes to startups? Definitely. So when, as I rightly mentioned earlier as well, uh, AI is not expensive at all. So I mean, take for an example, any of the AI system, the market charge uh, fees, take an example of Pixels, who's charging fees from four to eight percent, depending upon the volumes of media spend you're doing. But AI helps you to get minimum delivery of 20 to 25 percent ROI on that thing. So net net, if you are a marketer, you are getting saving of 25 percent and you're paying 5%, you're taking home 20% as saving. So uh, it is actually paying the fee of AI through the investment which the AI will be bringing you back. Does that answer the question? Uh, Mr. Enjoy, I hope uh, you got your answers uh, in case if you have any follow-up questions. Uh, yes. Uh, He's saying uh, thanks, Neil and Ms. Bharti. Thumbs up to Pixels. Uh, I have one more question to you. Uh, how is AI effective in insurance sector? I, I think you're, if you are an insurance guy, I give an example of insurance Aon as well. I think AI works brilliantly well uh, when you are in a sector where the conversion largely happens online. Uh, AI works in my experience in AI industry and fixes the experience. AI has worked fabulously well in BFSA as an industry. Forget about only insurance, but multiple other credit related occupation. And I have seen results as high as 35% improvement in number of leads getting increased or 30% kind of an improvement in number of getting more, uh, more output at a better, at a better ROI. Yes. The answer is again, simple. Uh, it, the AI is meant for BFSI industry. Thank you so much, Mr. Pandya, uh, for uh, an amazing session and an interactive one for sure. Uh, people will, were thoroughly unge uh, you know, engaged throughout the session. Uh, just when it comes to polls, uh, if you would like me to uh, talk about that here, uh, I can quickly give you the results. Do you want me to right now? No, you, can, you can take that offline. That's not a problem. All right. Okay. Sure. Sure. Uh, thank you so much once again, uh, Mr. Pandya. Uh, in case if you have more questions, we'll be sending them across to you. And uh, during the course of the conference and the award ceremony, um, if somebody is uh, putting up a question, we'll put that in the Q and A box, and it will be addressed to you, so you can answer that there as well. Perfect. Sounds well. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having me over. And guys, I have also shared my credentials so you can reach me out either on LinkedIn or my personal or my professional email ID as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much.